on this edition of Hawkeye News. Recently, well-known and highly respected motivational speaker Dr. Adolph Brown visited Red Oak ISD. Doc Brown spoke at each campus for hosting a parent night at Red Oak High School. We have special coverage of the Doc's visit and much more straight ahead. Plus, Hawkeye News Bond reporter Hanan Saley is back with an update from Mr. Shutman on the new Red Oak High School construction progress. See new images from the inside out, plus much more later in our show. With growth comes construction, and the city of Red Oak has now begun one of the most impactful projects in many years, the widening of Red Oak Road. Red Oak Road has for many years been one of the highest traveled roadways in the city, and with the multi-million dollar widening of Red Oak Road will become even busier in the coming years. Details coming up. Also, Red Oak ISD's Practical Parenting Education hosted the 5th Annual Phyllis Dodd Memorial Parent of the Year Awards at the New Shields Elementary School. This event marks the celebration of 20 years of practical parent education and 15 years of Parent of the Year awards. Find out who the winners were in this full report. And finally, the annual Mr. and Mrs. Red Oak pageant was held at Red Oak High School in late February. The theme this year was Red Oak's Got Talent. We have highlights you don't want to miss. Find out who the winners were and see all the action for the most attended pageant yet. All coming up next on this edition of Hawkeye News. You're watching Hawkeye News with Lexi Belote, Chris McClure, Sports with Ryan Garr, plus Roseanne Foster with our crime fighting reports, and more news coverage with our Hawkeye News Junior High team. Hawkeye News. Leadership you can depend on. Welcome to this first episode of Hawkeye News for 2010. I'm Lexi Below. And I'm Chris McClure. Now that the second semester is well underway, there's a lot going on around the district. Before we get started, Hawkeye News Bond reporter Hanana Saley joins us. Hanan is inside the brand new Red Oak High School with what's to come later in her report. Hanan? Thanks, Chris and Lexi. Words cannot describe how awesome the new high school looks from the inside. Coming up later, I will have new images from inside this unbelievable new Red Oak High School. Plus, we will also check in with Mr. Shutman for the latest. Lexi and Chris, back to you. That sounds awesome, Hanan. We look forward to seeing more. Hawkeye News is committed to bringing you the great news around Red Oak ISD and the community. And now for this month's top stories. Governor Rick Perry has proclaimed January as School Board Recognition Month to help highlight the contributions of dedicated men and women who take the time to care about our local schools. The Red Oak Independent School District joined districts across the state to honor board members for volunteering to tackle the enormous job of governing local schools. 
School board members are traditionally charged with establishing a vision for the education program, designing a structure to achieve that vision, ensuring that schools are accountable to the community, and advocating continuous improvement in student learning. These local citizens are elected by the community to make critical decisions that directly affect the future of our youth. They work hard at seminars and training sessions to keep up to date with the latest trends in educational leadership, are deeply involved in community activities, and spend many hours in the schools and at extracurricular events. To show our appreciation, Hawkeye News producer Alan J. Oliver interviewed students across the district in this special video presentation. I think a school board is, is a board full with uh, classes. I would say... Uh, skateboard. A surfboard. What can you say to a hero? We love our schoolwork. To someone who gives so much. Thank you. What can you say to a hero? Thank you for all you do. To someone who seeks lives to touch. We can say thank you. Thank you. school board is when a teacher teaches the kids and they write the same thing that the teacher does. You teach the kids stuff and do minuses and pluses. What I think a school board is, is when you walk past and you're new to the school and you see the teachers and you meet them. I think a school board is the people that run Red Oak ISD help make decisions and teach teachers how to teach children. The academics and everything that is put into our school that the people decide what needs to be done. As an athlete, I wanted to thank you for the new athletic complex. I'm looking forward to using it in the high school. Thank you for writing our policies and our student handbook. I know the school board members take a lot of time away from their family to help make important choices about our school, and I want to say thank you. We appreciate you. I'd like to thank the school board members for all the time and hours that they spend to help Red Oak Education be number one. Thanks for what you do for all our teachers. As a band member, I know the school board worked hard on the Performing Arts Center in the new high school. I can't wait to see it. Thank you for all you do for the students of Red Oak. Thank you for the beautiful school. Our school board rocks! School watch. Two dollars, did you say it? Fifty dollars. Computers. $700. Quality education. Rises. Thank you, school board. Muchas gracias. Thank you for the good morals and values. I would like to thank the school board members for making the school a safe and fun place for students to learn in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the good decisions you're making for the kids. Thank you! Thank you for all the teachers that are teaching us. Thank you! We love our school board! Yay! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you for all the important decisions you have made. Thank you! A red school board member for all the work you do. Thank you, red school board! For all your thought and commitment, thank you. We've seen your light shine through, and we are all too. Thank you for my education. You are our heroes. Thank you. You are our heroes. Thank you. you are Recently, Red Oak High School was visited by Dr. Adolph Brown, a well-known and highly respected motivational speaker. 
For more on this event and special coverage, we go now to Hawkeye News reporter Kaylee Prasivka. Kaylee? Thanks, Chris and Lexi. If the mark of a hero is the ability to turn private tragedy into public blessing, educator and entrepreneur Dr. Adolf Brown has deservedly earned that title as he recently motivated students, teachers, and parents at a recent assembly held in early February. Dr. Brown's humble and challenging beginnings serve as a testament of triumph over adversity. As a successful entrepreneur, an award-winning educator, and a people expert, coupled with his genuine optimism and enthusiasm, make every event a great day for personal growth and professional development. Dr. Brown is a master teacher who has received international recognition, awards, honors in the areas of educational excellence and real world leadership. He consistently delivers high quality instruction and makes a significant impact on audience members. Dr. Brown's presentation was uniquely personal, entertaining and interactive. Doc Brown toured the campuses of Red Oak ISD and then spoke to each class at Red Oak High School before hosting a parent night in early February. of Doc's motivational style, laugh out loud humor, and personal stories stays with his audience long after his performance. Red Oak ISD will remember Doc Brown's visit. Reporting for Hawkeye News, I'm Kaylee Prasivka. Back to you in the studio. Many Hawkeye News viewers may have received a new issue of the Red Oak ISD Community Newsletter, featuring more great news from inside our district. In the newest issue, released in early February, the new high school was spotlighted on the front cover. The new issue of the Hawk Headliner is jam-packed with great information, news, school dates, and calendars. Now that the new Shields Elementary is in use, all the focus is on the progress of the new Red Oak High School. That's right, Lexi. Teachers and students are anxious to see the inside and move into the new multi-million dollar facility. For more information on the high school's progress, we go now to Hawkeye News Bond reporter Hanan Asaley. Hanan? Thanks, Chris and Lexi. As I said before, words cannot describe how awesome the new high school looks on the inside. We are very excited, and as you can tell, I'm inside the new competition gymnasium. The progress is just amazing, and Mr. Shutman joins us again this month for the latest on the building's construction. Hello, this is Russ Shutman, Assistant Superintendent with Red Oak ISD, here to give you the latest update on construction at the new high school. I think what I'll do this time is summarize each of the sections of the school and give you an indication of where we are in regards to finishing the project. First of all, I'll start out with the competition gym in the athletic area. Basically, it is 99% done. All the graphics are complete, both on the floor and on the walls, and it looks fantastic. Gym floor has been put in and everything's done in the practice facility and we've also got some graphics on the wall there. And since we talked last, I think we've also installed the, the portable seating is in there and it's done. Um, the kitchen area is also done where students will go in in the kiosk area and get their food and so forth. So that area is all done along with what we call section A, which is the uh, academic wing of, on the three stories located on the west side of the building toward the baseball field. Basically, that's 99% done too. The only thing left there is some cabinet issues that need to be completed. As we move over toward the center of the building in the main entrance to the facility, which we call Area B, where the dome is located, uh, basically where we are now is they're finishing up sheetrock and painting and texturizing uh, all the office areas and the main entrance, the archway to the main entrance going in and the dome and so forth. So that area is very near completion. If we go to area C, which is the other academic wing, uh, more toward the east side of the building, 
Those three floors are having the finishing touches done as we speak. It will be completed within the next two weeks and we'll do a, a punch list walkthrough the very beginning of March. So we've made a lot of progress there and our hope is that by about the first week of March all the academic, main academic areas will be complete. Uh, moving to the fine arts area of the building, which is area H, J, and K. H includes the band hall and choir rooms, um, the black box theater area, and a couple of the other art rooms. The performing arts center, which is area uh, K, it's the last to be done. The scaffolding is still up. However, there's light at the end of the tunnel there because they anticipate that in the next two weeks well, the scaffolding will be down. The other thing I might mention is in the courtyard area, there's still some uh, cement that needs to be poured there. The recent snowstorms and rainy weather has prohibited that from being completed. But there's one more major section to pour, which uh, hopefully in another week or so when things dry out, they can get that done. So the building is progressing uh, nicely. Uh, it is expected to be turned over to us about the 15th of May. That's the update for now. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the pictures of the school. I'll be back next month from a totally different location inside the new Red Oak High School. For the class of 2011, I'm Hanana Saley, Hawkeye News. With growth comes construction, and the city of Red Oak has now become one of the most impactful projects in the many years with the widening of Red Oak Road. Red Oak Road has for many years been one of the highest traveled roadways in the city. And with the multi-million dollar widening of Red Oak Road that's underway, it's destined to become even busier in the coming years. The city has long been in need of more east-west travel roadways to get citizens and visitors from Highway 342 to I-35. City leaders have been working on this plan for the past four years and recently entered into a construction agreement with XIT Paving and Construction Incorporated of Waxahachie to complete the project. The first stage of moving water lines began in January, and in the next few months the actual road and drainage work will begin. The city asks that if you do not have to travel on Red Oak Road during this construction, please avoid it. However, if you do need to travel, XIT has assured citizens that two lanes of traffic will be open at all times. They just ask that you pay close attention to flagmen and construction crews working very close to the side of the roadways. The road, upon its completion scheduled for early 2011, will be a concrete four-lane roadway. The road will accommodate much more traffic, and will also have nice sidewalks along the roadway, making pedestrian traffic much safer for students and the general public. If you have questions about the project, you can contact the City of Red Oak at 972-617-3653. Our city is growing, and the leaders of our community are working to stay ahead of the growth with such projects as the Red Oak Road Project. Pay close attention as you travel Red Oak Road for the next year and Hawkeye News will keep you up with this project as well as other projects around the city and district in the coming months. Recently, some of our Austin Red Oak High School cake programs were to compete in the Skills USA competition. However, due to weather, most teams were unable to attend this year's event. Hawkeye News' own Ryan Gar placed first in the District 6 web design contest for Skills USA in early February. He will advance to the state contest in March. Ryan has already built several websites for Red Oak High School, so to most of you, this should come as no surprise. The rest of the Kate students were unable to compete in their contest because of the weather, auto tech and computer maintenance included. Red Oak is usually very well represented in first and second place awards at Skills USA. In other skills competition news, recently the NJ ROTC cadets competed in the Wiley High School J ROTC military skills meet and did extremely well. There were 22 teams from North Texas and Oklahoma competing with these cadets. Then the cadets competed in the Colony High School J ROTC skills meet. In other related news, congratulations to Amanda Draper and Shana Thomas for their participation in the VASE Visual Arts Scholastic Event Regional Art Competition held in Mesquite on February 6th. Shayna scored a 3 out of a possible 4 and Amanda scored a 4, received a medal and had a possibility of going to the state competition. Although neither qualified for the state competition, they did an outstanding job of representing Red Oak. There were 1,355 juried works of art with only 147 going to state. Now for an update on the Mighty Hawk Band, we welcome back to the show in 2010 Hawkeye News reporter Melissa Gonzalez. What's happening this month, Melissa? 
Thanks, Lexi. It is an honor to report that four Red Oak High School band students have made the All-State Band. This is the second highest number of All-State Band students that Red Oak has ever had, and it is the first time that we've had students competing in the All-State Band competition as 5A students. Congratulations to senior trumpet players Greg Lutweiler and Caleb Cox, and senior euphonium players Matt Davis and Dylan Toombs. Greg Lutweiler and Matt Davis performed in the 4A All-State Band. Caleb Cox placed 10th overall 5A trumpet in the state and performed in All-State Philharmonic Orchestra. Dylan Toombs placed first overall in the 5A Euphonium for the entire state and performed in the 5A Symphonic Band. We would also like to congratulate all 17 Red Oak High School choir students who participated in the solo and ensemble competition and brought home gold and silver medals for the superior and excellent effort. Congratulations to the Red Oak High School Color Guard. They recently competed in the NTCA Winter Color Guard competition in Northwich and Hills. The guard won first place and was promoted to Division Scholastic A. For all the latest on the Mighty Hawk Band, please visit our website at www.hawkeye-news.com. I'm Melissa Gonzalez reporting for Hawkeye News. Chris and Lexi, back to you. Red Oak had 20 athletes and partners competing in the Special Olympics Texas Area Tournament. This tournament had more than 2,000 bowlers from all over the Dallas area. The tournament went over the course of nine days at the USA Bowl in Dallas. Red Oak had doubles, unified doubles, and a four-member team enter in this tournament. These athletes and partners represented Red Oak Intermediate, Red Oak Junior High, Red Oak High School, and Red Oak Alumni. These athletes had the opportunity to bowl all year at Hilltop Lanes in Waxahachie. Congratulations to these athletes for representing Red Oak ISD. For a complete list of winners, please visit the Hawkeye News website at www.hawkeye-news.com. Recently, the Red Oak High School counselors hosted a parent night regarding the new and revised changes to the student registration procedures for the 2010-2011 school year. The complete video presentation and PowerPoint can be accessed and viewed at www.hawkeye-news.com or the Red Oak ISD website. The video and presentation covers important information that students and parents can use. Now to keep us up to date on all that is happening in the Renaissance, we now go to Hawkeye News reporter Taylor Anderson, who is standing by at the West Campus. Taylor? Thanks, Lexi. The Renaissance program is off to a great start in 2010. They started the year by leading an effort to make a change for Haiti. The group collected donations for Red Cross. However, Renaissance was not alone in this effort. They joined forces with Student Council and NHS to double the funds raised. The Renaissance program matched up to $500 for every dollar donated. As you may or may not know, an earthquake hit Haiti on January 12th. The earthquake was nearly six miles underground, which is far enough down that the quake can produce some severe shaking. The earthquake alone was a magnitude of 7.0, not including the 10 aftershocks that followed the quake with two in the 5.0 range. This earthquake was so severe that it was felt in Cuba nearly 200 miles away. The Haiti earthquake destroyed thousands of homes and the Haitian government is warning that hundreds of thousands could be dead, but death tolls are frequently inaccurate in the immediate aftermath of such disasters. Again, ROHS Renaissance worked together with student council and NHS members to raise funds to help Haiti, but collecting change for Haiti is just one of the many things Renaissance has been up to. Next year, ROHS is offering a peer coaching class. Very similar to teacher's assistance at the elementary level, the class allows juniors and seniors to choose a class period to help students that need tutoring in various classes. If you are interested or have any questions, contact Ms. Crawford. Renaissance is still continuing to go to the monthly Chamber of Commerce luncheon. At the Chamber of Commerce luncheon, Renaissance members eat lunch and listen to the speakers there at the meeting and mingle with business owners. If you would like to go to the next Chamber of Commerce luncheon, contact Ms. Guerrero. Also, Renaissance is getting ready for Relay for Life to raise money for cancer. Relay for Life is on May 21st, and Renaissance will be having meetings for it, so be listening for dates. Reporting for Hawkeye News, I'm Taylor Anderson. Back to you in the studio. As we mentioned last year, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, 18 of the 20 fastest growing occupations within the next decade will require career and technical education. Returning this year, we continue our Kate segment, which will feature our awesome career and technology classes offered to our high school students. Pulling double duty between sports and this informative segment is Hawkeye News reporter Ashlyn Jones, who is standing by in the Kate building. Ashlyn? Thanks, Lexi and Chris. This month I'll have the first look at a list of some new Kate courses that will be offered next year for the class of 2011. Plus I have a side story on how Kate students are learning valuable employability skills. 
The Association for Career and Technical Education represents approximately 29,000 teachers, administrators, educators, and counselors involved in career and technical education across the U.S. and abroad. Before the winter break, a list of new courses was submitted to ROHS administration, and this is our first look at the list of new ROHS course opportunities. In addition to excellent academic programs, Red Oak High School provides students the opportunity to learn valuable employability skills through the Career and Technical Education courses. The purpose of the Career and Technical Education Advisory Committee is to improve the quality of the K program so that students are prepared with workplace skills. Industry leaders and experts in different fields of endeavor serve as advisors for the K classes. These outstanding individuals met with the K teachers and exchanged ideas about the latest trends. Jeremy Tovez with the Atmos Energy is on the Cade Advisory Committee. He taught database essentials with Microsoft Access. Mr. Tovez recently visited Mr. Hall's computer maintenance class and provided advice and input to ensure the Cade program is best serving the students of Red Oak High School. Ultimately, Cade students at ROHS will graduate with both exceptional academic skills and valuable employability skills with the help of these advisory committee members. That's it for this month. See you later in sports. Reporting for Hawkeye News, I'm Ashlyn Jones. Joining us now is Hawkeye News senior reporter Karen Lopez with more Project Success feature presentations. Last month, Karen introduced this new segment, and she continues to dig through the Hawkeye News archives, finding interesting clips from the past to share. Who will it be this month, Karen? Thanks, Lexi and Chris. To catch everyone up, it was six years ago many of us participated in Red Oak's Project Success feature presentation. Here are a few clips. Can you guess who they are? Are you wondering what I was like or into in my past? Well, this is it. I grew up in Red Oak, Texas, and I went to a private school for pre-K and kindergarten. Going to a public school was pretty hard, knowing I didn't have any friends. I went to East Church Elementary for the first through fourth grade, and it was, it was very different. The teachers were more about the teaching, and the kids weren't as polite. Now I'm in the intermediate school. I have gone here for the fifth and sixth grade. In the fourth Fifth grade, I was in a club called Intermediate Merit Society for having straight A's. We went on field trips and got to skip school. It was so fun. This year is in the sixth grade. I have A's and B's, but only one C all year long. Um, it was a high C too. High school is going to be a blast. It will be so fun. So many sports to play, especially basketball, softball, and volleyball. The three sports I want to play, the three sports I want to play. I want to play and hopefully get a scholarship. I want to study f to be a physical therapist. I want to start my own practice. I know I will have to study for at least six, four to six years. Now that I told you, maybe I will have influenced you to do the same. I, was, I started playing soccer when I was four at the age when soccer was nothing but charging around with absolutely no strategy besides chasing the ball. I played soccer for seven years. I started Indian Guides shortly after beginning soccer. Indian Guides was a father-son program sponsored by the YMCA, consisting of yearly campouts and monthly meetings. I had heaps of fun in both soccer and Indian Guides. I very recently completed my first and definitely not last band contest, making the highest score possible. I also very recently took part in UIL Music Memory Competition, where my team made third place. I'm an advanced math and GT, and my favorite subject is reading. Assuming I graduate from high school, I would like to go to a technical college like Digipin. Then I would like to obtain a job at Gearbox Interactive, home of Halo Combat Evolved for PC in the Mist series. If I can't acquire a post at Gearbox, I would like to try for Stainless Steel Studios Interactive, a game studio specializing in a historical real-time strategy games for PC. If Stainless Steel Interactive doesn't work, some Ensemble would be one of would be my next choice. Ensemble Studios is home to Age of Empires, Age of Kings, and Age of Mythology. 
Empires and Kings are in historical RTS, where mythology is a semi-historical RTS. After I graduate high school, I want to go to the University of Texas. I've always been a Longhorns fan. In college, I want to major in photography and journalism. When I finish college, I want to travel around the world. I would like, I would really like to visit London, Paris, Hawaii, and maybe even Rome. While I'm in those places, I'd like to learn other languages. I also want to have enough money to buy the things I need, but also buy the things I want, but don't have, but don't have to have. I want to get a job that makes a pretty good amount of money, but I don't want my job to stress me out around my life. Well, I hope you enjoyed hearing about my activities, goals, and problems in my life. So my conclusion about my life is I need to make the best of my life because I only have one chance at it. Did you make your guess? If not, you may or may not be surprised to know that the first clip was Tara McKinney, the second was Matt Davis, and the third was Riley Heckethorne. We will have more of these throughout the remaining school year. Seniors, if you would like to buy your future presentation, they are on sale for $5. Contact a member of the Hawkeye News team or see me. I'm Karen Lopez reporting for Hawkeye News. I'll see you later in sports. Joining us in 2010 with some Project Success news is Hawkeye News reporter Casey Bird. Casey has information on this year's Project Success t-shirt winners. Casey? Thanks, Lexi. The Project Success Drug Education Program has been the official drug education program for Red Oak ISD since the 1990-1991 school year. This program was created by Chief Scott Lindsay and is currently under the direction of Investigator Stacy Fulliger. In mid-December, the winners of this year's Project Success t-shirt design contest were presented their shirts and a certificate. Congratulations to Katie Marks and Samantha Morgan on designing the official shirt for 2009-2010 with the slogan, Don't Do Quack. The shirts are given to all 5th graders who sign and commit to the Living Drug-Free Contract. The shirts are paid for by the generous donation of our staff partners who give through payroll deduction and our corporate sponsors. Red Oak Intermediate students recently produced their annual Project Success Had It Drug-Free commercials. Students are encouraged to send a positive message by acting out scenes in real-life situations involving the use of drugs and alcohol. You can view all the commercials and find out who the top video winners were at www.hawkeye-news.com. Did you bring this up? Did you? You know it! Hey, what are y'all doing? Yo, what's up? We just lit it up. Y'all want some? Oh, yeah, let's start, man. No, man. Well, what's wrong with it? Because it gives you black teeth, it gives you lung cancer, and all that other bad stuff. Shut up. No, it doesn't. Come on. Cool people like us do it. Well, cool people like you end up dead. No, we don't. Come so on. Just leave. Y'all, hold on. <coughs> y'all are right. Don't, don't, don't do drugs. drugs. If you would like to know more about Project Success or become a parent volunteer or donor, contact the Red Oak ISD Police at 972-617-4607. Reporting for Hawkeye News, I'm Casey Bird. Back to you in the studio. The Red Oak High School Hawks Against Destructive Decisions Inspiring Teens, or Had It organization, hosted a mentor dance for Red Oak ISD 5th and 6th graders at the Red Oak High School cafeteria. And what was the largest turnout in the history of the organization, around 500 students from Red Oak Intermediate attended. The mentor program, run by Had It, was designed to connect the younger students of Red Oak to the drug-free students of Red Oak High School. This program emphasizes the importance of making good decisions and keeping drugs out of the lives of Red Oak ISD students. The mentor dance featured a dance floor, music, bounce house, pizza, games, and prizes for students. This event was open to all 5th and 6th grade students attending Red Oak Intermediate. Every year across Texas, well-dressed youth will fill hotel ballrooms and school gyms ready to enjoy the most exciting night of their lives, prom night. Hawkeye News reporter Kaylee Kitzman joins us now with information that might help with some of that cost. Kaylee? Every year across Texas, snazzy looking boys and lovely looking girls get ready to enjoy their prom night. It's big, exciting, and expensive. Although, when alcohol and drugs are involved, this simply splendid night can turn deadly. In fact, over half of teenage car crashes influenced by drugs and alcohol are fatal and occur on prom night. Through the national program Buzz Free Prom to emphasize the importance of making responsible choices, students are asked to pledge to stay alcohol and substance free on prom night. In exchange, they are acknowledged and given a Buzz Free Prom ID, which is good for a variety of on and offline discounts and rewards for prom related merchandise and services from retailers throughout our community. Saturday, March 6, 2010 marks our 9th annual Buzz Free Prom Misses Dress and Tuxedo Giveaway where our community collaborators will host a fun-filled educational event 
where complimentary prom dresses and tuxedos will be distributed to deserving students. Seven million teens are about to spend approximately $600 on prom. It's time for making the smart choice to stay buzz-free on prom night. It may not be the easiest decision to make, but it's definitely the right one. For more info, visit the website www.buzzfreeprom.com. For Hawkeye News, I'm Kaylee Kitzman. Chris and Lexi, back to you. Red Oak ISD's Practical Parenting Education hosted the 5th Annual Phyllis Dodd Memorial Parent of the Year Awards on February 11th at the New Shields Elementary School. This event marks the celebration of 20 years of practical parent education and 15 years of the Parent of the Year Awards. Hawkeye News reporter Emily Byers joins us now with highlights. Emily? Thanks, Chris and Lexi. The event was a highlight for the school year as many students across the district nominated their parents for this year's Parent of the Year. The ceremony, which has been named to honor the late Phyllis Dodd, who gave so much of her life in education and to the practical parenting, was heavily attended. The following parents were chosen as recipients of this award. For Wooden Elementary, Mary Stifer, mother of Megan Stifer, third grade, Clayton Hancock, father of Sarah Hancock, kindergarten, for Red Oak Elementary, Macaria Hernandez, mother of Anna Lopez, second grade. Richard Bannister, father of Sarah Bannister, fourth grade. For Eastridge Elementary, Wendy Faulkner, mother of Brooke Faulkner, first grade. Clifton Chad Womack, father of Carson Womack, first grade. For Shields Elementary, Tina North, mother of Emily North, fourth grade. Michael Heimbuck, father of Zachary Heimbuck, fourth grade. For Red Oak Intermediate, Jessica Hill, mother of Angela Perez, fifth grade. Jaime Carrillo, father of Giovanna Carrillo, 6th grade. For Red Oak Junior High, Tammy Dowdy, mother of Christopher Dowdy, 7th grade. David Wyther, father of Warren Wyther, 7th grade. For Red Oak High School, Jacqueline Smith, grandmother of Jacqueline Abamu, Jr. Charles McMillan, father of Paige McMillan, Jr. Miss Dodd's family appeared at the event and presented the winner with $50 grocery gift cards. Congratulations to all those selected as Parents of the Year, as well as to all those nominated by their sons and daughters. The commitment of our parents has been the reason for so much of our success, and on behalf of Hawkeye News, we say thank you to all our parents for your love and support. Reporting for Hawkeye News, I'm Emily Byers. It's business as usual in 2010 at our elementary and intermediate campuses. This month there's quite a bit going on, so let's get started with this month's Elementary and Intermediate Report. Shields Elementary, Eastridge Elementary, Red Oak Elementary, and Red Oak Intermediate Schools each received a $750 grant from the ExxonMobil Educational Alliance Program to support the school's math and science programs. Victron Energy Incorporated representative Mr. Walid Alamadine worked with school officials to secure the grants, which are one of 2,400 available to schools across the country served by Exxon or mobile stations. Fifth grade Chain Links Club members at Red Oak Intermediate help load canned goods for delivery to the North Ellis County Outreach. Chain Links Clubs are part of our Rachel's Challenge Community Service Project dedicated to spreading kindness and compassion through our school, community, and the world. Blaine Bridgeford, president of Bridgeford Food Superior Division, recently spoke to 6th grade advanced math classes at ROI about running a public company. He told the students how his grandfather founded the company, which then sold meats in the 1930s. In time, the company expanded and went on to incorporate and sell stock. The company created a recipe for frozen bread, and then later on, Mr. Bridgeford developed a frozen packaged product called Monkey Bread, which the students were able to sample. Recently, four Red Oak students participated in the 11th Annual Sports Extravaganza, sponsored by Region 10 Education Service Center and Lions Club International. The athletes participated in the events of their choice, including 100-meter run, 50-meter dash, softball throw for distance, standing long jump, beat basketball, and goal ball. A Red Oak Elementary kindergarten student helps the dental hygienist while she cleans his teeth. Students open wide for Dr. Blaine's during a visit from that Smile Texas mobile dentist. Also at Eastridge, the dental hygienist cleans students' teeth during a visit from the Smile Texas mobile dentist. Fifth grader Erica Francisco won the Red Oak Intermediate Annual Spelling Bee. All the students who participated in the Red Oak Intermediate Spelling Bee did a wonderful job. Thanks to ROI gifted and talented teacher Dana Wisdom for organizing this year's Spelling Bee. Red Oak Elementary second grade gifted and talented students are showing their nine weeks projects. The projects show their knowledge of how animals use their coloration to stalk their prey or to protect themselves. 
At the end of each nine weeks, students prepare a project to present to their class, showing an understanding of concepts. And finally, Red Oak Elementary Principal Sharon Graves and Assistant Principal Stephanie Poe got silly string by their students after challenging the students during a recent fundraiser. Hawks fans are turning their attention to a host of late fall and early spring sports, including basketball and soccer. For more on the Hawks and Lady Hawks teams now making the news, we turn things over to sports anchor Ryan Garr. How are things in the Sports Center, Ryan? Thanks, Chris and Lexi, and welcome to the Sports Center, Hawks and Lady Hawks sports fans. It's time to enter the Athletic Zone. Join me here in the Sports Center are Hawkeye News reporters Chris Aguspe Trail and Karen Little Lopez. I'll take a look at the varsity boys basketball and soccer teams. And I'll bring you up to date on Lady Hawks action in soccer and basketball. And I'll have information on swimming, powerlifting, and athletes who have signed their letters of intent. I'll go ahead. I have fan mail. Some of those are mine. Later on, our dynamic duo, Ashlyn Jones and Wade Regas, are back with news on underclassmen sports. But first, the basketball highlights. The Varsity Hawks basketball season got off to a great start, dominating most of their schedule until they faced Lancaster, losing 86-94. Things did not get any better when they faced West Mesquite, 49-57. After those two rough weeks, the Hawks turned around their losing streak to beat Maybank, 70-61. The Dallas Morning News then named Earl Graves the Honorable Mention Player of the Week. Continuing their winning stride, the Hawks found victory over Terrell, 69-56. Galen Edwards led the Hawks with 20 points. But the winning streak did not last for long as the boys lost in overtime to a tough Mesquite Petit, 60-66. Then the Varsity Hawks lost to Lancaster, 55-69. The Hawks then went on to beat West Mesquite, 63-49. Earl Graves led the Hawks with 20 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists. Galen Edwards had 16 points and 7 rebounds. And Dominique Bonner had 10 points. Then the Hawks beat Terrell, 68-54, for a potential playoff spot. At press time, the Hawks beat Mesquite Petit 66-36. Earl Graves led the Hawks with 21 points and 9 rebounds. Dominique Bonner had 17 points and Galen Edward had 13 points. This guarantees a playoff spot for our Hawks. The Hawks went on to defeat Midlothian 56-51 in the UIL Regional Quarterfinals. At press time, the Hawks are off to face the Dallas Pinkston Vikings in the Regional Semifinals. We'll be back with more information in our next edition of Hawkeye News. Ryan, one of my fans sent me fan mail again. It was a letter with a picture of planet Earth on it, and on the back it said, wish you were here. That's funny, Goose. Another letter I got, it said that you were a... Okay, Goose, it's time to move on. Up next, Little Lopez has updates on what's happening with the Varsity Lady Hawks basketball team. The Lady Hawks basketball season started great. However, a few rough patches did slow them down in their winning stride. With an overall record of 2-0, the ladies played Grand Prairie and won 65-46. The girls went on to win a huge road game against 5A Allen 55 to 41. 
That placed the record at 5-4 in the season. Unfortunately, the Lady Hawks went on to face Mesquite Petite 52-40, but made up for that loss by taking down Terrell in a huge district win, 64-56. The Lady Hawks came out and jumped to an early 23-7 lead after the first quarter and were able to hold on for a victory. The ladies played very well and battled hard. The Lady Hawks then defeated Terrell in the last home game by a score of 73-58. The win wrapped up the regular season for the Lady Hawks with an overall record of 19 to 11 and the district record of 8 to 4. The Lady Hawks have secured a playoff spot for the first time in 5 years. The ladies then tied Mesquite Petite for second place in District 15-4A. At press time, the Lady Hawk varsity faced the Cleburne Yellow Jackets in the by district round of the playoffs. The Lady Hawks ended their season losing in the by district game to Cleburne 61 to 69. Recently, some Red Oak High School athletes signed letters of intent. Courtney Bean signed with soccer to go play at Howard Payne. Courtney English signed with Hill College to play soccer. Amber Franklin signed with McMurray to play soccer. Devin Gwine signed with Sagu to play volleyball. Colby Houston signed with Angelo State to play football. Becky Lamar signed with Howard Payne to play soccer. Ricky Teles signed with Bradley University to play soccer. Hunter Ganoza was a boys district MVP and Hannah Ganoza was a girls district MVP and coach Gretchen Ganoza was the girls district coach of the year. The entire team did an outstanding job in defense of their title. Thanks, Goose. Up next, I'll have information on how the Hawks soccer season is coming along. But first, Karen brings us up to date on the Lady Hawks. Karen? Thanks, Ryan. And yes, the Lady Hawks soccer team won their home opener against the very physical Forney team. The Lady Hawks then traveled to Cedar Hill to play a very tough Lady Longhorn team. The final score was 4-1. to one. The defense has only allowed three goals in seven games. The Lady Hawks soccer team then traveled to Rockwall. After a very disappointing first half, the Lady Hawks trailed 1-0. The ladies rallied in the second half, but were unable to come up with a score. Rockwall won 1-0. Then the ladies took on the Ferris Yellow Jackets in the district opener. After a tense 15 seconds, the Lady Hawks put one on the board. The Lady Hawks moved the ball extremely well and looked excellent scoring the next eight goals. The final score was 9-0. Then Lady Hawks soccer team played district rival Waxahachie. Coming out strong, the Lady Hawks won 2-1. Two the Lady Hawks are now 2-0 in district and have an overall record of 8 wins, 2 losses, and 1 tie. In soccer news, the Hawks played Forney, beating them 3-0. The boys then traveled to Longview to participate in a weekend tournament. First opponent was Athens, where the Hawks won 3-0. The Hawks' momentum continued, taking down Alvarado 1-0 and defeating Denison 4-1. This put the boys' record at 6-0 for the season. The Varsity Hawks soccer team then played their first home game against Woodrow Wilson. The boys won 4-0. In the district opener, the Hawks faced Ferris winning 9-0, taking the boys' record to 11 wins and 1 loss for the season, and 1 win, 0 losses in district play. At press time, the boys' soccer team defeated Waxahachie 6-0. This takes the team to 2-0 in district and 11-1 overall. At press time, the boys' soccer team played Corsicana. This was a huge game for the boys. Whoever won this game would be first in district. The boys played really well and won 3-0. This was a huge step for the boys. That takes the Hawks' overall record to 14-1 and 4-0 in district play. The Hawks have scored 52 goals and have only given up 4 goals all year. We'll have more on the Hawks soccer team next month.
before we go, it's time to check in with Hawkeye News underclassmen sports reporters, Ashlyn Jones and Wade Regas. Welcome back, a and Thanks, Ryan. As you've noticed, Red Oak High School's finest dynamic duo is back once more. Kicking off 2010, Wade and I are back to bring you the updates on both underclassmen Hawks and Lady Hawks basketball and soccer. That's right, Ashlyn, and it's great to be along your side again in this new decade. I'll take it from the top. Let's check out our freshman and JV Hawks. Freshman Hawks basketball team beat Crandall 43-38 and Mesquite Petit 51-36. The Hawks used a strong defensive effort to hold Petit to 10 points in the second half, giving Petit their first loss in seven games and giving Red Oak the championship trophy. Then the freshman Hawks faced Forney, falling just 10 points short of the final score was Red Oak 47 and Forney 57. And finally, Red Oak beat Terrell 43-38. The leading scorer was Andrew Walsh with 19 points. In JV Hawks basketball news, the Hawks lost to Lancaster 73-79. The leading scorers was Brandon Burks with 14 points, Andrew Wallace with 17 points, and Marcus McNeil with 20 points. Not letting their close loss to Lancaster hold them down, Red Oak tore West Mesquite to pieces, taking the game 60-48. Then the JV Hawks suffered another loss to Maybank, losing 60-49. The boys bounced back from yet another loss to overcome Terrell 51-29. This brought their record to 11-9. The JV basketball team struggled with Lancaster and West Mesquite as they started their second half of district. The Hawks fell to Lancaster 87-58 despite 27 points from Jeremiah Gaines. The Hawks had trouble maintaining their momentum and fell West Mesquite 69-53. The Hawks got back on track with a big win 97-42 over Maybank before beating Terrell 49-42. That win moved the Hawks record to 14-11 and 5-5 in district. In JV Hawks soccer news, the team played their season opener at Forney. The game was tied at the half 0-0. With 18 minutes left in the game, Jeremiah Garcia split the two defenders and passed it off to Brandon Cirillo who scored. The boys won the game 1-0. Now that that's done, I guess I'd like to hear your side of the underclassmen sports story. How's that coming? The only reason you guess you'd like to hear about my side of the sports world is because I'm going to dominate and you don't want to be embarrassed. Let's check out those Lady Hawks. Up first, the freshman Lady Hawks basketball team played Lancaster and fell behind only scoring three to Lancaster's 12. The girls regrouped for the fourth quarter, scoring seven to Lancaster's six. Next, the freshman Lady Hawks faced Forney. The girls started off strong. However, Forney would never allow their lead to grow. The final score was Red Oak 40, Forney 36. The freshman Lady Hawks finished their season against Terrell. The game started as expected. It was close going into the second quarter. At the half, the Lady Hawks had started to establish a lead. In the third quarter, Terrell mounted a comeback, but it was short-lived. The Lady Hawks continued their battle and won the game 49-34. to In JV Lady Hawks soccer news, the team opened the season by hosting the Forney Lady Jackrabbits. Despite a solid effort by a very young team, the girls fell to Forney 1-0 on a goal with seven minutes remaining in the game. Next, the JV Lady Hawks went on to host the Wiley Lady Pirates. First half play was very energetic and physical as the ladies battled the Pirates to a score 0-0. Despite a valiant effort, the ladies could not manage any consistent offensive threat and the game ended at 0-2. In a rematch of the JV Ram Cup Tournament Championship game, the Lady Hawks traveled to Rockwall to battle the Lady Yellow Jackets. The Lady Yellow Jackets were able to bank one off the goalpost with 10 seconds remaining to win the game 2-3. At press time, the JV Lady Hawks hosted the Faith Family Academy Eagles. Following a first half of missed opportunities and numerous turnovers, the Lady Hawks won. The Lady Hawks began district play against Waxahachie. We'll have more next month. Ashton, I was nowhere near embarrassed, but you did do a great job. Be sure to catch us next time. For now, I'm Wade Regas. And I'm Ashton Jones. Reporting for Hawkeye News, Ryan, back to you. To keep yourself up to date on all the Rogue ISD sports action and photos, log on to the Athletic Zone online at sports.hawkeye-news.com. For the Athletic Zone, I'm Ryan Gar. I'm Karen Lopez. And this is the Goose. Lexi and Chris, back to you. Many of us are members of the Red Oak High School Network on Facebook or have a multitude of friends on MySpace. That's right, Lexi. No one can deny that teenagers often are members of social networking sites. However, these sites are sometimes used for identity theft. Hawkeye News crime anchor Roseanne Foster is here with us with some useful tips on how to keep our identity safe on the web. Roseanne? Thanks, Lexi and Chris. Many of us have at one time or another had some form of social networking site, whether it's a Facebook, a Zynga, or a MySpace. In fact, there are approximately 150 million people using Facebook, never mind MySpace or Zynga. There's nothing wrong with that. This is, as a general rule, a completely harmless and even beneficial form of communication. However, it can at times become a tool for others to take advantage of us through identity theft. 
We all post information in our About Me section, thinking it's harmless. According to IdentityTheft.com, 74% of social networking users divulge personal information. We post our birthdays, our school, our hometown, our email, our picture. Usually, it is completely harmless. But in some cases, the information we post can be used to discover our password to our accounts. And since many of us use the same password for credit cards, billing, and bank accounts, this information should not be in the hands of strangers. In some cases, it doesn't matter. For some of us, our parents pay the bills and our password and financial accounts have little to do with each other. But that's not the only harm. Identity theft involves more than just hacking accounts. According to OurIdentitySafe.com, Congress recently passed a law which allows the last four digits of our social security numbers to be put on public documents. While this alone may seem of little importance, when that information is coupled with a birthday and a hometown, researchers were able to correctly guess the first five digits about 40% of the time. So the question many of us are asking is, why does it matter? We're teenagers and those of us who don't already have financial information that can be used aren't at risk, right? Wrong. According to the teen portion of the ID Theft Center website, identity theft is when someone uses your information for their gain. Thieves can use information about you, such as your social security number, to open up fraudulent credit cards, get student loans, and even get out of traffic tickets, all of which can affect us, as we would be responsible for the cards or loans. So what can we do to prevent identity theft? IdentityTheft.com advises, avoid posting phone numbers or addresses in your profile. Use strong security settings. Only accept friend requests from people you know, and realize that even people you know can be identity thieves. It's been reported that about 70% of adults and 55% of children know the person who has stolen their identity. If you believe your identity has been stolen, report it to the local police. If it is a fraudulent credit card, place the fraud alert, which basically helps prevent further damage on your credit reports, and cancel the credit card. There is nothing wrong with having a personal page on a social networking site. When used responsibly and wisely, these sites are beneficial and fun for all. Until next time, stay safe, Red Oak. For Hawkeye News, I'm Roseanne Foster. This year's Mr. and Mrs. Red Oak pageant was held on Saturday, February 27th at Red Oak High School. The theme this year was Red Oak's Got Talent. For more on the outcome and winners, we go now to Hawkeye News reporter Jasmine Simmons. Jasmine? Thanks, Lexi and Chris. At this year's Mr. and Mrs. Red Oak pageant, Contestants competed in three categories, beachwear, talent, and formal wear. All of the contestants worked hard preparing themselves in hopes of winning the coveted title of Mr. and Miss Red Oak. The show raised over $7,000 that will go towards purchasing educational anti-drug materials and scholarships for Red Oak High School seniors through the Project Success Drug Education Program. The winners were Tim Day from Red Oak Intermediate and Rebecca Vega from Wooden Elementary. It is totally awesome, baby! Woo! Dream come true! pageant will be sold at hawkeye-news.com. Reporting for Hawkeye News, I'm Jasmine Simmons. Lexi and Chris, back to you. Well, that about does it. We look forward to bringing you much more next month. We also wanted to remind you that we would really love to hear from you. So if you have any news ideas, comments, or suggestions, you give us a call at 817-875-5527. And don't forget to check us out at www.hawkeye-news.com if you missed any of our reports or need more information on the Hawkeye News team. I'm Lexi Below. And I'm Chris McClure. Until next time, thanks for watching. And make it a great day.